Hi class, uh, welcome to module three or week three of our statistics course. In this week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking a lot about confidence intervals. Now, in this class, there's two types of confidence intervals. Okay, there's confidence intervals for a population mean, and then there's confidence intervals for a population proportion. What I want to do in this video is I want to show you how StatCrunch can help you on three homework problems that you have. Uh, the first prop question I'll do, number one, tends to be um, one of the more difficult problems. Um, on your homework, and it doesn't exactly relate to the um, finding of confidence intervals. What I mean is, is what I'm asking you to find here when it says compute the critical value z of alpha divided by 2. That's just one part of the confidence interval formula. So then what I want to do is after I show you how to do problem 1, I want to show you how to do a question related to the confidence interval for a proportion and a confidence interval for a mean. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So the first question in your homework says something like this. Compute the critical value z of alpha divided by 2 that corresponds to an 89% level of confidence. All right, the way you break this down is you see this Greek letter alpha, right? That's what's called um, the level of significance. And all alpha is, is you take 100%, load up my calculator, and you subtract the level of confidence. Now that means that our critical value corresponds to an 11% level of significance. Now, when we go to use StatCrunch here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to a decimal. So instead of saying 11%, we're gonna say it as 0.11. Now the next thing you'll notice is that it takes alpha and this subscripted value here and divides it by two. So I'm gonna take this level of significance as a decimal and divide it by two. All right, so keep this number in your mind, 0 0.055. All right, now the way you find this, right, is you in StatCrunch, is we'll load up our StatCrunch. We're going to go to Stat. We're going to go to Calculators. And we're going to go to Normal, All right? This calculator, this normal calculator that we used a bunch um, in last week's uh, video. Here's where it gets a little weird. We know that z corresponds to a standard normal variable, so mean 0, standard deviation 1. That value okay, that I had, let me load it back up, this 0 0.055, I'm actually going to put right in here. So 0 0.055. I'm going to click this button and change it to greater than, and I'm going to hit compute. And you'll see here, this number right here, this 1.598, that is our critical value, right? So the problem said round it to two decimal places. So it should be 1.59, I'd round the nine up. So it'd be 1.60, All right? Let's go back to our problem and see if that's the right answer. Yeah, we got it, good. So that tends to be one of the harder problems on the homework, but if you follow my method that I just did, you can rewind the video and watch it. Your stack crunch will do it for you very quickly. All right, I want to go now to question number three. All right, and question number three says construct a confidence interval for a population proportion. So right there, that's important. It tells you that it's a confidence interval for a proportion at the given level of confidence. So it tells you X is equal to 120. That's the number of successes. N is equal to 1,100. That's the sample size, right? And I want a 99% confidence interval. All right, so I'm going to go back to my stat crunch here. And the way you're going to handle proportion problems is you're going to go stat, and then there's this option called proportion stats. Whenever you're dealing with population proportion, you're going to use that option right there. All right, for this week, we're always dealing with one sample. And then you basically really only have two options to ever choose from with data or with summary. Now, if you look back at the problem, they didn't give you the raw data. They just gave you the summary numbers. So I'm going to click with summary. All right, now you have to plug a bunch of stuff in here. So the number of successes, right, that was the X value. That was 120. The number of observations was 1,100. I'll put that in there. It didn't ask for a hypothesis test. We'll do that in a subsequent week. What it asked for was the level of confidence. So I'm going to click this little radio button here. 
and the default will be 0 0.95, but the problem asks for 99%, so I'm going to have to change that to 0.99. Then I'm going to hit Compute. All right, if you look here, you get this printout. It says proportion P, the count, the total, the sample proportion, the standard error. Then you see this thing called the lower limit, L limit, and the U limit stands for upper limit. And these are our confidence intervals, right? The values we want. So the first part said, find the lower limit, okay, of the confidence interval and round to three decimal places. So I'm going to take my lower limit here. It's 0 0.084, but when I round it, it becomes 0 0.085. So I'm going to take that, plug it in here, just change it to a 5. I got it. So my upper limit to three decimal places was 0 0.133. No need to round there, so I'm just going to copy that. And plug it in here. And I got it again. So notice how StatCrunch did this so quickly for you, right? If you go through the question help, like view an example, you'll see that they'll ask you to use these formulas here for finding the confidence interval, which you can, you absolutely can. I just wouldn't recommend it. I think using the StatCrunch there was, was a lot easier. All right, let me end this video now, jumping actually pretty far ahead to question number 12 for you, okay? And this one is actually going to be about a confidence interval for a mean. So let me read you the problem. So a survey was conducted that asked 1,086 people how many books they read in the past year. Results indicated that X bar is equal to 15.7. So the sample mean on average, people read 15.7 books. In S, the standard deviation was 18.1 books. So let's construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean number of books people read and interpret the interval. The way you're going to do this in StatCrunch, you're going to load this up. And when you click Stat, here's where it gets a little confusing. You have this button called ZStat and TStats. Now, when I go back here, whenever you're given a sample standard deviation, like S is equal to 18.1, right, you're always going to use the TStat. So I'm going to go TStat, one sample, and they gave me the summary of the data. Right, so the sample mean, so people on average read 15.7 books. The standard deviation was 18.1 books. And the sample size here was 1086. All right, the next thing it asked was a confidence interval for the mean. Well, if you look here, they asked you to construct a 90% confidence. So I'm going to change that level to 90, and I'm going to hit compute. And you'll see here, just like before, the lower limit, L limit here, that's the lower limit of your confidence interval. And the U limit is the upper limit. All right, now this one's a little confusing. All right, so let me go back to the problem. All right, it says select the correct choice below and fill in the box to complete your answers. And they want us to round to two decimal places. All right. So the problem says there's a 90% chance that the true mean number of books is between blank and blank. There is a 90% percent confidence that the population mean number of books is between blank and blank. And if repeated samples were taken, 90% of them will have a sample mean between blank and blank. All right. The correct conclusion here is when you're talking about um, confidence intervals is we are 90% confident that the population mean B is somewhere between these values. So let's go back to StatCrunch and they said to round to two decimal places. So this is 14.8. It's going to be 79, but when I round it, it's going to be 14.80. And then the upper limit here would be 16.60. And we got it. And um, not all your problems can be done this week in StatCrunch, but a lot of them can. Anytime it asks you to find or construct a confidence interval, Please use StatCrunch. It will be a very valuable tool for you. I mean, as always, um, and valuable tool for me as well. But uh, as always, if you have any questions, please post them to the discussion forums and I will answer them as quickly as I can.